What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we need to take a look at the Omnibots. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The lovely folks over at IGN very sneakily last night went and showed us the Omnibots. Now, why didn't I bring this video last night? Because I'd already shown you Blaster and Soundwave. And come on, Wassy needs to sleep occasionally. We'd had, I think, three days in a row with no Transformers videos. But you know that when Transformers news drops, I will be here for you, ladies and gentlemen. I got your back. So, the Omnibots then. These are being released in the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive booster pack. These are not being released in a particular set of boosters. These are not being released in their own box. If you want to buy these, you can go and pick them up at San Diego Comic-Con, or you can pick them up on the Hasbro website at about the same time. That's how you get them. Remember that last year, they did have a San Diego Comic-Con pack, which now is worth an awful lot of money. But the rumors going around, and they are extremely strong rumors, are that the printing run is significantly larger this time round. So it shouldn't be quite as difficult to get as last time. And when you buy one of these packs, you get all three of the Omnibots. And frankly... They are designed to be played as a deck. You'll see what we mean when we get there. So let's start off with Sergeant Overdrive, given that he is the best among them, or at least he is the leader. So Overdrive then. It's a 9 cost, although obviously the three of them together add up to 25. They are designed to be played as a trio. And in terms of stats, no. These are not good enough stats for a 9 cost. We're looking at health of 12, defense of 1, and attack of 3 or 4. Now, the guidelines I always use are the averages from wave 1, though they've dropped slightly, where we would expect 4, 12, 2 on an 8 cost. So, 3 or 4, 12, 1 on a 9 cost? No! No. Not loving it, ladies and gentlemen. But the good news is, I'm liking an awful lot else about it. At the start of your first turn, because you will start in alt mode, you may play a utility onto one of your Omnibots. Now, the way it's phrased here is that you may play it from your hand. That means if you don't have a utility in your hand to begin the game, gutted, there's nothing you can do. And there are plenty of utilities you might want here, but what makes me rather sad is that generally speaking, when we're talking about cars, the utility most of us want to use is turbo boosters. Problem is that turbo boosters can only be put on cars, and when you put it onto a character, you untap them, but this is done at the start of your first turn, when none of your characters are going to be tapped, they are all going to be untapped. So that kind of defeats the object here. Now that's not to say you couldn't play something like a security console, for instance. You absolutely could. White icon, utility, when you defend, you draw a card and plan one. But my point here is that the best utility you're generally playing with cars, boo, hiss, etc. If we have a look at it in bot mode here, when one of your Omnibots with a utility battles, it gets focus until the end of the battle equal to the number of Omnibots you have with a utility. That is to say that if you've got three Omnibots all within a utility, you get focus free. And that will be all of your Omnibots because they all have a utility. Whereas if you've only got one Omnibot of a utility, that one gets focus one when it battles. And battle means attack or defend. And focus means you look at the top X cards of your deck, focus three, the top three cards, focus two, the top two cards, etc. And you may scrap any number of them. That means that if you're attacking and you see blue and orange icons, you can scrap the blue icon cards to maximize your chances of hitting your orange icons. You could scrap some single orange icons in the desperate hope of hitting a double orange icon. Bit risky, but you certainly could. This is fun. This boosts 
your Omniboss. And you're going to see from the other two that they have very similar skills. I like to do characters separately, but the thing is that these three Omnibots, because they make their own deck and because the skills are so similar, I don't feel comfortable splitting them into their own videos, hence why this one is a bit longer than our average video. Cool. We'll look at all the designations at the end. There's a good reason for it. So if we move on and have a little bit of a look at Private Downshift, we see that it is an 8-star character, which is pretty much what we expect, because if one is 9, then the other two have got to be 8 to make up to 25. And the stats take a little bit of a hit. And by a little bit of a hit, I mean it's exactly the same stats as Overdrive, just with one less health. We got a health of 11, defense of 1, and an attack of 3 or 4. Really, pretty much all of those stats are one lower than we'd want on an 8 cost. They're not great. But at the start of your first turn, you may play a weapon onto one of your Omnibots. Hey, you see where we're going here, ladies and gentlemen? You can probably even guess the alt mode skill of camshaft here, but wait, we'll get there. This means that you can start with a weapon. Now again... It says you may play a weapon onto one of your Omnibots. It doesn't say from the deck. So the strong implication here is that it must be played from your hand. So you can get a grenade launcher down and that's awesome. But you've got to have it in your hand in order to do so. Remember that things like Energon Axe cannot be used here. Because Energon Axe can only be played onto damaged characters. This lets you play a weapon and that's lovely. But do please remember that you can still only play them if you'd be allowed to do so. Energon Axe can still only be put onto damaged characters. Power Stored can still only be put onto melee characters. Though quick shout out here to General Megatron. Because General Megatron, when it is in alt mode and you flip to it, you do damage equal to an enemy, equal to the number of weapons you have on the battlefield, so you could potentially play that with Private Downshift, attach a weapon straight away to Private Downshift, and then you've got more weapons on the field. I don't think that's a good combo, incidentally. It's one that sprung to mind and amused me a little bit. So this is really nice. You get a weapon straight away. If we flick into bot mode, when one of your Omnibots with a weapon attacks, it gets bold until end of battle equal to the number of Omnibots you have with a weapon. So again, at this stage, you can probably guess what Camshaft's bot mode skill is going to be. But again, wait your turn. So Private Downshift here can give all of your bots bold 3, two of your bots bold 2, or one of your bots bold 1, depending on whether they have a weapon on or not. Now, the other thing is, it might not be terribly relevant, but you never know what's going to happen in the future. It is dependent on the number of Omnibots with a weapon, not the number of weapons. That's an important distinction. And look, Bold Free is good. Power Sword gives you Bold Free, and that can only be put onto melee characters. Some of them are melee. We'll get to all that in a moment. So this is really good. Like all of the skills we're seeing here, it really depends on what you can do. It's a little bit sad. You're not always going to have all your weapons on. General rule, other than your alt mode skills here, you're only allowed to attach one weapon during your turn. Or one upgrade of any description. But then again, you start with a weapon, and then as you go to attack, you attach a second weapon. You've then got bold too. That ain't bad. And the thing is, you're probably not building this for bold and for tough and all of that. So you can really focus in <laughs> on the one you're really going for here or maybe you do maybe you go bold and tough here because you can play extra weapons and extra armor it's kind of cool now at this stage you can probably guess what private camshaft does but let's confirm it anyway it's got stats of health of 11 defense of one attack of three or four just like downshift and it is overdrive with one less health we could probably have guessed that. In alt mode, at the start of your first turn, you may play an armor onto one of your Omnibots. Cool. Expected, but cool. Again, you've got to have it in your hand in order to play it. Again, you cannot break the rules here. So what you wouldn't be able to do ever 
is have superior plating working with this because superior plating can only be played after a tech research and as you're playing this at the start of your first turn you cannot have played a tech research it's literally impossible the thing to remember here is that on your first turn if you're going first no upgrades if you're going second you can play an upgrade if you're willing to give up playing an action Whereas with these three characters combined, you can play three extra upgrades here. Now, you only start with a hand of three cards, so it's not ideal. You need to get kind of lucky to have a weapon and an armor and a utility in hand at the start of the game in order to take full advantage of it. And if you do, you're going to need some kind of draw power here. Although... I do love the idea of playing this with System Reboot, dropping all of your upgrades before the game even starts, then making your opponent scrap their hand while you get four new cards. That would amuse me, ladies and gentlemen. That would amuse me. We then flick into bot mode, and when one of your Omnibots with an armor defends, it gets tough until end of battle, equal to the number of Omnibots you have with an armor. So either all of them get tough three, two of them get tough two, or one of them gets tough one. Again, you could build this for both bold and for tough, or you could be going largely bold and ignoring the tough. The thing is, these Omnibots work best as a team of three. Private camshaft here, maybe you don't want to go tough. Maybe you're building a bold orange deck, but you still need camshaft to make the most of downshift skill and overdrive skill. So you kind of need to play them as a trio anyway, even if you're not focusing on tough. So what we have here is three alt modes that together can put three upgrades out at the start of your first turn. And the wording here is important. It's not the beginning of the game. So if you're going second, it is after your opponent has had a turn. And then you can, under the best case scenario, have bold free, tough free, and focus free on all of your characters. There's nothing to stop you playing something like new designs, for instance, to play extra upgrades so that you can boost these skills up just that little bit faster. Now, if we look at the designations, they're all cars. So all of them have alt modes, which are cars. I've already mentioned turbo boosters. Turbo boosters is great here. It's a utility, it gives you plus one attack, and when you attach it, you untap that character. No, you're not making the best use of it at the beginning of the game because you're not untapping, but I still think they're worth playing. Then, of course, we've got Start Your Engines, which lets you flip all of your characters from bot mode to car mode, and then you get to untap one of your cars. Extra untapping, either extra turns or extra attacks, depending on how your opponent is. If all their characters are tapped, you're just getting extra attacks, but if they're not, you can get whole extra turns out of this, and that's pretty sweet. They are built as a trio. Now, in terms of the designations, it gets kind of interesting. The odd one out here is Private Camshaft. Private Camshaft in both bot mode and alt mode is a specialist, which means that you get stuff like Field Communicator to play the top card of your deck, but you also get multi-tool here. Multi-tool, when you attach it to a specialist, it allows you to attach an extra upgrade. Now, incidentally, yes, you can use these at the beginning of your first turn. So if you play a multi-tool down at the beginning of your first turn, multi-tool, incidentally, you're looking at a weapon here. So it would have to be put onto downshift. You would then be able to play another upgrade. If you've got enough cards. Or for instance, if you started with two weapons, you could put a multi-tool down. And then when you attach multi-tool, you can play that second weapon. That would work because you just get to use it. When you attach it, you get to use the skill. And having a specialist here is really good because you want to play extra upgrades to really get the most of your bold, your focus, and your tough. But it's the only specialist they can only be put onto camshaft. If we have a look at downshift, we're melee in alt mode, ranged in bot mode. And if we have a look at overdrive, we're ranged in alt mode and ranged in bot mode. 
That is to say, of the essentially six sides of the characters, we've got two specialists, three ranged, and just one melee. So as much as cards like Power Sword and Body Armor are great, they can only be attached to Private Downshift and only when it's in alt mode. If you attach it in alt mode, you can then keep it when you go into bot mode, but I'm nervous playing these when they can only be played onto one of the six permutations. Ranged things, on the other hand, I like very much. You've got overdrive, regardless of what mode you're in, and you've got downshift when you're in bot mode, so you can be playing stuff like Armed Hovercraft. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, if you attach this to one of your characters at the beginning of your first turn, you do get to do the extra damage. So we are in another situation here where they're not completely on board. So if you play a double shockwave deck, oh look, they're both specialists. Go specialist. Nice. Here we've got a bit of melee which I'm kind of inclined to ignore, although more testing would need to be done. And then we've got decent specialist and quite good ranged. But you run the risk of getting these cards that you can't use because you've got the wrong bots or they're in the wrong mode or whatever. Incidentally, we do actually have a leader here as well. Overdrive is an Autobot leader, so do please remember that Matrix of Leadership can be used rather nicely. Give each of your characters plus one attack and pierce one. And those are the Omnibots, ladies and gentlemen. They are a deck in and of themselves. They can be teched into other things, but I think it's probably unlikely that they're going to be. They strike me as a trio of characters that work best together, and if you want them, you're going to have to get that San Diego Comic-Con pack, because if you don't, you ain't going to have these characters. No word yet of alternate art prints, etc., and the San Diego Comic-Con cards from last year never found any other release. So, I would try and start making arrangements now if I were you. I kind of like these, though. I think there is a deck here, and I, for one, am fairly excited. But I would like to know how you feel about this, so please do let me know in the comment section. Go nuts! Be nice! And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wossy. That's where we talk about games, like Transformers, and all the other ones that take my fancy. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching... Wassy plays.